Is it working? Yes. Hello, my friends. It is I, Ben, of Second Dynasty, uh, coming at you live from our offices on a Thursday. Normally, we stream on Fridays at 3 p.m. Central European time. Uh, today, however, is a Thursday. And the reason why we are streaming today is because if we don't, there'll be no stream. I'm going to be at home with the dog tomorrow, so I thought I will stream and we will talk about the Typhon and all our preparations for Soul Survivor, which is coming out in two weeks. And I just realized that and I am stressing out a bit. So, um, we've actually come quite a way. Let's see, I want to double check. Yes, my microphone looks like it's on and working well. Uh, the volume level should be decent. And I can see you guys in the chat. Hi to Solo Spirit, Tamsin, Shurgol, Mon Capitan, uh, Brian, and uh, yeah. Yes, today is Torch Dog. <laughs> uh, great, great, great. Thank you in the chat for letting me know that everything is looking good. So, um, good crowd actually, considering the fact that we're streaming on an off day, and nice to see Mon Capitan. Uh, who is and has been uh, MVP very often. Welcome Sem785 and Shooting Star. Um, so, yeah, we're looking... <laughs> uh, we're looking at the shuttle, and before I get in to uh, all the nitty-gritty of what we're actually doing, where I'm stuck, where I'm making progress, uh, we are going to briefly talk about where we're at. So in two weeks, on the 26th, although technically I think it might be the 25th here still, because I'm going with Australian time, even though I'm in Central European time, um, Fridays are not a great day to launch a Kickstarter, so we're going to do it on the Thursday instead. Um, of course, technically, by Thursday it will actually be Friday in Australia, so still technically on Alien Day. Uh, that is the 26th of the 4th, or if you're in the US, LB. 426. Um, so I think that's where that comes from and that's uh, certainly where our cheekiness comes from. Let me switch to the close-up camera. So Lisa Lott and Alvin have been painting like mad um, and we've actually come a long way. I'll show off what Alvin has. Lisa Lott has these beautiful little control panels from the inside of the ship whilst Alvin is in the process of printing the outside. He's just stepped out of the office so far so this would be our sort of like version for photos that we take. Um, you know, we're not the best, we're not the worst when it comes to painting these things. I think Alvin does a great job, uh, much better than what I could do. Um, the inside is just painted silver at the moment. It's a bit of a pain in the butt, so I'm not going to risk ruining his paint job or anything. But I just wanted to show you guys, well, it gives an idea of the size, how it might look when it's done, different angles. Anyone that was actually on the, uh, let's see, I might share some pictures, although I'm a bit concerned uh, that I might have a bunch of dog pictures in this. So uh, let me see what I can find. But before then, I just want to show off next month's uh, Tribes development. We're taking the tank design even further into a manned version. So this is just the body of the tank. It's got six legs. Um, the top will pop off. I'm not entirely sure how yet or what the details will be but you can kind of see there's a, a cabin in there for the crew so this is a work in progress from album uh, if you're on our tribe which is quite similar to patreon so uh, these are 3d printables if you don't know what this channel is all about uh, channel sounds weird to say really this is more a, a show and tell work session of what we do which is make 3d printable designs for tabletop gaming and we are exclusively sci-fi all right, let me get up the chat again. Um, conundrum, your stuff is awesome, but I'm running out of room to put my ships, but I don't want to stop paying for the tribe. Keep up the great work. I, yeah, from from a creative perspective, that all sounds great. <laughs> uh, we're actually also running on out, out on uh, room for ships. In fact, um, it is a major issue. Um, maybe Maybe I can, uh, we, we were talking about this today. I don't know if this arm moves very well, but you can kind of see. Oh no, Ben, you minute. All of the space we have issues with. 
You don't want to say this card, do you? <laughs> Some people might recognize that shape. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a bit of a mess in here. Uh, sorry, Benjamin, you're going to have to move over. So yeah, we kind of have to... John's pro probably crying if you're seeing this. Um, let me just get this aimed in the right-ish direction. Oops, I think we've... I've messed it all up now. Uh, so let me switch back to my scene. Hopefully it sharpens up in a little bit. And I think we want it slightly more central. There we go. Alrighty, so back to the chat. Uh, I have switched to 15 millimeters to prevent the wife from killing me. Um, I mean, that that is a good tactic. Uh, going to have to start using a garage to store things. We, we, we're discussing that. We want to get some more shelving and display stuff for out here, but I mean, it's going to eventually become a real issue. It already kind of is. And uh, this thing is actually going to make it worse. Um, so this is officially got the name Typhoon. You can see our APC, the, the, uh, the Minotaur APC that we made um, from that pushback tow tractor. Um, and I'm currently kind of just figuring out how this interior is going to work. You can kind of see I've dragged in a ton of stuff into this scene. What is that all about? Well, these are all crawl spaces. So, in two weeks we are launching this shuttle, which I just showed off. Uh, it's detailed inside and out. Um, printing nicely. I've actually got quite a few people test printing it at the moment. Hey Stephanie, it's been a while. Um, <laughs> you're more than happy to take them. Well, this is also one thing that we're offering uh, now in the Kickstarters. John um, has actually started... Oh, you're fine, Stephanie. It doesn't matter. Uh, John has actually started using... Um, sorry, has started professionally printing uh, for us. Uh, it's not an exclusive license, but it is kind of attached to the campaign. It does let us have a certain degree of quality control. So... John is printing two hero uh, versions of the Erebus shuttle, uh, which he's going to send to my mate Brian Jenkins, who painted the uh, the slake near, and who may be painting uh, eventually the Nostromo when we get to it, depending on what our timeline looks like. I mean, I think he'll be painting it anyway, but the question is whether or not it will be done in time for the actual campaign later in the year. Um, so, yeah... Um, we want that to be the top, uh, the best quality possible. So he's, you know, done some parts at 0.2 millimeter nozzles and that sort of thing. So as a part of the campaign, what I'm going to say is we are going to be offering a physical version of the shuttles. And I think it will be exclusive Kickstarter prices. We're probably going to sell them at about 120 euro uh, plus postage. So that's for a 28 millimeter scale, 13 inch, basically the model I held up. Uh, just a little bit earlier and uh, we are also um, considering you know offering both the base version there I think that's at I don't want to say for sure but I think that's a 0.4 millimeter um, nozzle at 0 0.16 uh, millimeter layer heights I think the deluxe version is 0 0.2 but at um, maybe 0 0.12 millimeters layer height so it, it has got a higher fidelity a lot of the details are kept a little bit better it'll be cleaner John's prints are stupidly clean anyway um, I'd, I'd be really happy to have him come visit again soon but we just recently started a uh, new Erebus scene on our um, let's see so let me let me just drag this over we started a new Erebus channel on our discord and this is a print he has of the cockpit for FDM that is insanely uh, detailed, I feel. So excellent work, John. Uh, so if we have a deluxe version or something like that, uh, this would be the kind of quality. You probably won't get exactly that quality if you are um, with the base version, but it will be better than what I just showed you because uh, John's printers are better. Well, no. Then the printers aren't better. He is a much better printer. Let's put it that way. Oh no, I've lost. Where did, where did I go? Where did you guys go? Here you go. I found the chat again. All right, I'd love to print more ships. This one looks great. Thanks, Sam. 
Uh, getting a Bamboo Lab P1S in soonish so that will be bad for space. I mean, great investment. I really don't like supporting Chinese companies, but um, I have to make an exception. It's just, at the moment, um, honestly, it's done a better job than the, uh, than the Mark IV. The Mark IV kind of shat itself. Um, it made fantastic prints right up until the time when they implemented uh, the fast mode, then it went to shit. So, um, yeah, a lot of work to do be done. So, this ship is completely printable and uh, it does print support free. I do have a number of people test printing it, some of which may or may not be in this chat right now. Um, and this is just very much the prototype version, the market version, uh, the STL version, I guess, will be launching in about eight weeks, I guess, two weeks to Kickstarter, I guess seven weeks, three weeks on Kickstarter, then two weeks afterwards until the funds clear, and that's when it goes out, right? Um, but of course, John is doing those test versions. Um, it's going to probably be one of the best prints you can possibly get, and I think we counted it out on a bamboo. It's about, was it about 75 hours, John? Something like that. Um, so actually quite quick for um, for a, sh a, a ship that's about the size of a Shuttle Alpha. Actually a bit bigger. Well, I guess it all depends. Um, about 800 grams, 850, something like that. Um, so fairly light too. Uh, but this ship is not going to be ready for that day. Um, it won't be released on the same day. This is going to take maybe an extra month or so to get fully released after the campaign finishes. And this is a lot of work to take on, uh, which is one of the things I keep thinking about, but there is purpose to it. So all of the work that we do on this, which I'm calling the Typhon, um, or we actually have like a sort of in-law document that I'm sort of writing up. So this would be the Encom Martin Ursa Class E Interstellar Shuttle, and this particular one is the Typhon. I also liked Callisto for a name, kind of in the Greek myth, uh, mythology, underworld stuff at the moment, which follows on nicely with the universe. We're sort of trying to make these ships feel like they fit into. Um, the cargo bay, I want it to be large enough that we can stick a vehicle in here. Uh, the entrance is three squares tall. That is, each square is uh, one and a half inches. So the nice thing here is this will be the same scale as Traveller even though it's not a traveler model, obviously. Um, so if you want a sort of different ship for the Traveler universe, this could do the job. Um, of course, the engines probably uh, would be a little bit off-brand for what Traveler normally is. Uh, yeah, there we go. The standard edition uses 75 hours and 850 gram. So let me just turn off my... I forgot my um, Thunderbird, which means I've also forgotten to turn off notifications whoops on my Dropbox so hopefully we shouldn't have any more disturbances there um, we're gonna run to a hard cutoff point of four because uh, tomorrow the reason why I am streaming today is because my wife is going to Spain uh, for a little mini holiday with her friends um, so yeah I need to be at home tomorrow I'm still working it's just I don't have the setup I've got here um, and yeah um, the A1 Mini and the R&D that Bamboo Labs has been doing is Arcane Sorcery, it's so good. It, it is very impressive. Um, so, or at least the results I've been getting lately are very good and good enough that I've been convinced that our next printer will probably be another Bamboo Labs rather than a Prusa. So, I think Prusa has some catching up to do, to be honest. Um, maybe not in final quality, but definitely um, you know, speed versus quality and that sort of thing. And they kind of killed the quality mode, I feel, on the Mark IV. Or at least ours did. So, I don't know what happened. So what I'm actually doing at the moment, uh, this, this is a total mess, is trying to plan out what the interior is going to be. So, we have this nice asymmetric bridge. Now, if you wanted to, when you actually print this yourself, you could make this symmetrical. It would be quite simple. Um, it does reuse a few parts of the shuttle, but not many. 
Um, there are actually going to be a bunch of different custom parts. You can kind of see here what the shuttle part looked like without the engine. So there's a lot of hull work to do. What I need to get done in the next while is a version of this which actually um, is suitable enough that we can give you a good idea about what to expect with the Typhon. So this is more like a, a concept ship, if you will. Um, not quite <laughs> Star Citizen level, where a <laughs> concept ship will come out and then like maybe in a year you could get your hands on it in, in, in the game or something like that. Maybe not a great thing to put it in. But basically, like um, the shuttle itself, we wanted to make something that's cool, that's light, that's cheap. So the bare, bare bones version on Kickstarter is actually only going to be 20 euro. Now that will get you nothing else. No stretch goals, nothing like that. I don't know what the final price would be for stretch goals. I'd say at least 30 euro. Um, but we just, we know that, you know, there's tough times at the moment. People don't have a whole heap of money. And also we'd like to be able to get a whole heap of new people in and excited about this ship and maybe getting ready to buy something as huge and massive as what the... Um, the no stremo is going to be so it's a cheeky name it's not actually a no stromo uh, clone it's a ship that's meant to feel like it fits in to the alien universe it has the does does the design language but it should be sci-fi-ish enough like like the shuttle is that if you stock this in star wars or something else um that would kind of feel right at home i feel like it's very close already um so I've heard people refer to the movie Alien as like a haunted house film in space. So when I create these larger ships, that's what I want them to feel like. And after having enjoyed some really beautiful pictures of uh, the Odyssey, there were some great paint jobs. Um, where was that? I'm trying to find which section of uh, our Discord that was. I think it might be in print paint no <laughs> uh, of course I can't find it now Maybe, oh it's probably actually in um, the Chimera series now that I think about it yes so um, yeah the, the, of course I'm running a stream mode so I can't do a, a shout out to the great artist uh, that did this but there's a great Odyssey uh, paint job going on at the moment I really love to see that painted up because we never had the chance um, but the Odyssey um, I can maybe share just the picture. Let's see, let's put this over here. And the question is, can we, no, <laughs> I'm going to have to scroll through it. So um, the interior shots are actually much nicer looking, but this is a beautiful paint job um, of the Odyssey. And when I built the Odyssey, uh, the goal was very much to create that sort of um, haunted house in space look. So by doing that, um, I you know put in a, a, a different network of crawl spaces. The, the idea was there would be different ways to make it to the bridge or you know kind of turn the ship into a gaming level so that you could you know base a, a scenario around it. it would be these ships I feel are, are great for like either an ongoing campaign where you would use the ship over and over again like a hero ship or a really great scenario setting for say if you're um, running some kind of scenario with miniatures at uh, like a gaming convention or that sort of thing. Um, so I really want to put a lot of thought into things and that's why this is such a mess at the moment. I'm kind of sketching it out, figuring out what the rooms would be, where we actually have um, room to play with. Um, this is roughly where the top level will be. So I'm just going to quickly run through uh, what I'm thinking at the moment, so um, these white passages are, are crawl spaces. I kind of like the idea of having these little nooks in the cargo bay so you can have some loaders. These are from the sleep near, um, these loaders. So from 2020. Um, we're going to do new loaders. Um, my idea of it is like in Alien you have the UPP, the Union of Progressive Peoples. Uh, basically 
imagine if the Soviet Union never ended and also they're not massive assholes like uh, Russia are at the moment. Um, actually, they, they are kind of. But basically, a Soviet knockoff of a, of, of a P5000 power loader is kind of the idea we're going to be going for. So even more sort of like alien in, aliens inspired, I guess. Uh, this marks where a ladder well might be. I'm still trying to figure out the networks. This box thing is actually based on... Um, I want this ship to still represent what you would have in an alien role-playing game. And there are very few modules actually described in the ships. One of them is like air scrubbers. So this is this tower thing is actually an air scrubber. I think it would be a great place for a xenomorph to make a hive of some kind. Or Benjamin maybe. Um, soon TM at Star Citizen. Yes, indeed, Stephanie. Um, sounds like uh, you might have some concierge access there yourself. Um, so yeah, the all of the details here. Um, it's it's meant to look like it, it feels like it fits into the universe, right? I say this a lot, um, but what we're looking for here is design language not rip off this is the like okay you're making a new star wars movie build a ship that feels like it fits into the star wars universe right don't build the millennium falcon build something that feels like it could be a knockoff um corellian shipyards ship or something like that so this is essentially what we're doing we're building something that could be feels like it fits into that the same way that you know our APC you could use it for Starship Troopers you could use it for aliens you could use it for other military campaigns or whatnot it's relatively generic sci-fi but still we're trying to capture that feel that has a little bit of nostalgia attached to it um, and this is the creative space that I like to live in so we have all of these massive cavities in the ship, we have these engines, and here I'm kind of doing the sort of like the Kenner Star Wars toy vehicle idea where really you're more concerned about getting the miniatures in necessarily than everything matching up to where it should be. So for example, this little nook does kind of make its way into this engine section at the moment, um, which is why I've moved and shortened this side a little bit um, but what I'm saying is like there is a balance here where instead of it being overthought I'm trying to find something that strikes a nice balance between detail thought and consideration for the systems on the ship and playability because um, at the end of the day this is designed for tabletop gaming right and um, practically, if I made a Nostromo, the Nostromo, for example, is the, the actual Nostromo, I should say, to differentiate. Uh, it's a 330 meter ship, but the actual occupied decks, deck A, B, and C, are absolutely tiny in comparison to the rest of the hull. I, it's like only 10% of the ship is dedicated to crew. Um, which is probably more realistic in some ways. Uh, but here, you don't want to print a ship that's just, you know, 90% infill, and then you've got a tiny little play space, right? You want to be able to take off the layers and play through the decks. Um, and that's what we're going to try and achieve here. So the floor will lift out so you can access the crawl spaces. The crawl spaces will be multi-deck as well. Um, and yeah, it's it's just going to be a bit more complete, um, striking that balance between playability and, I wouldn't say realism, but just, just like, you know, how much of the ship systems it would take up. Um, oh, you're only 500 euros in, <laughs> invested. I, I wouldn't want to look at my account. I, I've, I've kind of I feel like I might still be on a subscription um, and I probably how long has it been now 11 years I don't want to think um, 
it got to be a case of like where I had the the newsletter subscription thing, and uh, it was before they started implementing GST uh, or VAT. I mean, um, which here is twenty five percent, and they're like, if if you uh, stay with us uh, now and don't disconnect, we'll keep the pricing at twenty bucks a month instead of you know. I guess it would have been 25. Uh, so I should have just unsubscribed. I think I did, but I think I left it way too long. Um, so yeah, that's the general gist of it. Walking through the ship, we've got our cargo bay, which is double height. Um, like I said, I wanted to make it fit an APC. Um, I'm experimenting with the walls and the crawl spaces underneath. It is kind of hard to see at the moment with all this blackness. Uh, how much we actually have room for, what the purpose of these crawl spaces actually would be, because we want to put some thought into it. Um, and I would like to do some miniatures either this time or when we do the full version where they actually fit in the crawl spaces, right? So our heroic um, miniatures should be able to fit in these crawl spaces without bases. And Kai Shiniku is actually working on our soul survivor as we speak. Um, Looking forward to seeing what that looks like. Uh, the APC could also fit perfectly in a cyberpunk game. I agree, Custom Blink. I agree. Uh, have you thought about the corridor slash room light slash LED housing? Also, will you ever do a replica of Outpost 31 from the thing? Uh, I'm a bit cheeky. Well, Outpost 31 is not really uh, sci-fi in the sense... Like, if we did the Crash UFO, that would be one thing. Um, I would say not us, but there could be people that watch this that happen to be creators that might pay attention to that. Um, so, yeah, um, we want to play in the ship, yes, indeed. Um, that's actually a pretty high percentage of crew space for ship design. You mean if it's 10%? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sam also had the newsletter on sub for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Alex Klesson says, Yay, crawl space minis. Mon Capitan says, Crew variation, stand, sit, action, prune, vent. Indeed. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I'm not ready to show anything off yet with the Soul Survivor. Um, I want to get the first looks in. But we have done some tools slash weapons. Uh, and by that I don't mean... We're, we're more like alien isolation here. We're not... not um, not colonial marines. But I thought I would take this next half hour uh, to actually grab some of these crawl spaces and we're going to map that out. But first I just wanted to go through the ship. So we've got our cargo bay on uh, our sea deck. We will have some crawl spaces uh, leading forward to the ship. Um, and again, these scrubbers here. I don't know what we might have on the other side there. Um, I don't know that there's all that much room. I think this is actually going up uh, an inch. Um, so you can kind of see the floor level shift because we do have shift because we have this angle here. So uh, if I turn on deck B, we can see uh, you will go up the ladder well, right? Uh, I don't know if this is going to be closed off or where the wall is just yet. It's kind of that compromise between um, cargo or not having cargo. Uh, and where we run out of runway as far as like for floor paneling is concerned. I'm pretty sure um, Yeah, you can kind of see here. This would all have to be built in and even if we went half an inch over it would start creating issues uh, But of course we don't have to make that ladder well as deep um, But it is a bit of a question of okay. Well, where do you put? the ladder well um, That ladder well also has to service going up to the next level I feel um, I think it'll just be one ladder well, because there is a premium of space in this thing. Um, and then inside the crawl spaces, here I'm planning on having like a tower so you can kind of get up to different levels through the crawl spaces. Uh, which kind of makes sense thinking about it, because, you know, the air scrubbers would have quite a bit of ventilation leading to it. Uh, so it might even have a level above. Um, towards the front of the ship, you've got your bridge. I was thinking this little walled off section here could lead to the, uh, the AI mother sort of computer core. Uh, not entirely sure yet. We've got this passage just sort of leading off. 
I think even though, you know, it's not a great use of space having all these passages, it does create a more interesting gaming map, right? Uh, makes the scenario more interesting with this sort of corridor. Uh, you can kind of see that this is all placeholder at the moment. See how this corner doesn't match up? This wall is a newish kind of... It, it's an un incomplete wall. So we're using a combination of stand-ins uh, with the chief goal of getting this to look well enough that we can do some renders of what the deck plans are supposed to look like so that if you are backing a level which will include the Typhon um, in the future uh, that can be... Um, it, you should have a great idea about what to expect when this larger ship does arrive. So if this is 800 grams, this thing should be 4 kilos if I'm not wrong, uh, if it's about twice the size. So it is a big ship, it, it's actually going to be the widest ship we've ever made. Um, I haven't counted yet, but like if this central section is 6 inches, uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 there, another five on top of that so 16 inches wide or 16 squares let's see um, crawl space the final frontier uh, Stephanie says will you physically print the semiotics on the hull I hope so um, the semiotics are included uh, you can kind of see them here so uh, for these ones we are just um, they are built in indeed uh, and designed so that you can just what we do often is just run a pen on the semiotics uh, to get them read. Uh, Alex Klesson asks uh, or says yeah asks you mean that the letter against one more for the letter will uh, I assume you mean for the the hidden crawl spaces or something I don't know if this this will probably be more Nostromo style I'm not sure we do have a bunch of those parts in one of these scenes but I think I need to talk to Alvin about it before I figure out where I think it's in the Starship the next generation stretch goals um, looking forward to seeing the head galley mass and births okay so this is something we have to discuss so we have our cryo sleep chamber which might also double as a med bay I'm not sure I'm thinking of like putting just a med sort of section in here uh, with the med with, with the hypersleep chambers um, doubling as sort of maybe having a medical role or that sort of thing. Someone gets seriously injured, you put them to sleep rather than uh, dealing with it on board this ship. Um, then I would say um, here I don't know what to do with this room. Now I hear some of you saying or well, you could have a captain's cabin. I don't know if I'm going to keep this window either. Um, the thing is the thing is, in this universe, if you look at the the shuttle, the the narcissus that the um, that the Erebus is definitely inspired by, right? There are no beds. There's no galley. It's just a lifeboat. Like it can double as a shuttle. You could probably rig it out. Um, and in the deck plans, uh, in the uh, blueprints book, it does have a fresher. Um, but you know, no galley, no rooms, just the sort of like crow chambers. This is quite similar. This purpose of this ship is say, you need a, a priority cargo, uh, quickly taken, well, relatively quickly, um, from you know one system to another. You've got your cargo capacity. You've got your engines. Um, honestly, the only time your crew are awake is at the start of the trip and at the end of the trip. So a galley, yes. The Nostromo crew weren't actually gonna be sleeping. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there are rooms and there must be like a washroom or something, right? So you, you, they're all semi-naked in the uh, cryo tubes. Then the next thing to do would be to have a shower, right? Like the Marines did in Aliens. Um, so having that sort of stuff makes sense. Um, I don't know if I'm just going to expand this to have sort of like the freshness and shower there, but what I'm saying is it doesn't make sense to me for this ship, for this design. You could use open lock tiles to add those rooms back in, right? But to have, um, 
a captain's quarters to have state rooms as you would have in traveler ships this doesn't make sense for this design uh, and I am struggling a little bit to figure out what all these areas are uh, on deck B um, so I think you would have some systems here for maybe maintaining the RCS um, systems on the interior maybe you could visibly see some tanks or that sort of thing um, some industrial parts uh, we could probably block off you know a couple of rooms here so you could have like a workshop or um, things that you actually see uh, on the Nostromo uh, Dick Freeze the wounded traveler style well yes indeed um, the type is Type S is 17 inches wide at the rear. Yes, yes it is. However, it don't have anywhere near as, this is definitely a larger ship, volume wise, um, than the Type S. Um, due to the fact that, you know, if you kept this going straight, then yes, we'd have more Type S type um, space, but yeah. Hot tub on deck B. I like that, uh, Stosh. Um, no state rooms, plot twist, the whole crew is secretly synthetic. I mean, then you wouldn't even need cryo tubes, would you? Uh, the Nostromo has a shower headroom and personal berths. We just don't see them in Alien. I'm quite happy to add furniture myself to make rooms using low berths to go from system to system in one week. Um, yeah, some, something like that. Uh, but honestly, there's plenty of room here. Like, you wouldn't need the air scrubber uh, cavity. Uh, if this was a traveler ship, you know, you could actually put some staterooms over here. You could also just make the cargo bay a little bit smaller, uh, or, um, yeah, there's lots of things to do. So my goal though is to figure out what's in this area. And then this here, uh, note that the cargo bay is only three squares high, not four. So here I'm planning to have like a little rise, like a staircase. Um, following the hole going up into deck A which I really haven't worked on much but if we turn on the hole it makes sense uh, I'm not sure which one of these ladder wheels actually applies anymore I think it's the rear one um, yeah it looks like it's the rear one there uh, so this would be your galley area I feel and if there are rooms um, sleeping berths seems like that's reasonable to include right but i would include it as more like a communal sleeping area like say you're on a tour bus it's kind of like a tour bus sort of arrangement where you have a bunch of bunks that are sort of built in with lots of storage and that sort of thing then the rear section uh, will be dedicated to the reactor so directly above um engineering um we'd have an area that We'll probably rework this. Uh, we'll put in, you know, some reactors. I'll probably the the kind of reactor I'm I'm probably looking for is like, I think the Anisadora, or was it the Patna? I always get the ships confused from Alien Isolation. But I had a, a nice smaller reactor generator thing uh, that got overloaded. There's a couple of other sort of generators and that sort of thing that are worth looking at. Um, so yeah, the galley where you would have, I, I was thinking originally of getting rid of this window, but I kind of like it more now. Um, uh, and honestly, making a variant of this where this is closed off, not too much of an issue. Uh, planning for the window, a different thing. So I don't know, I think it gives it a bit of personality. Why don't you guys let me know what you think? Let's, um, let's start a poll. Um... Keep the Typhon window, let's go, start the poll. Get a voting on that one. So it shall be interesting to see what people are feeling about that. Oh, that's a very strong yes, <laughs> so far. Uh, let's see, um, an observation deck slash mess, yes, nice, indeed. So you want a pretty view I imagine maybe we do a version of this too where it's like shuttered up or something, but if anyone's played Alien Isolation, there is this scene where you sort of reach this concourse and uh, hit a button and all of the shutters sort of open up into space, making this beautiful viewports of, 
you know, the, uh, the gas giant and everything. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of like where we're at. Um, <laughs> I've mostly explained away most of this session. Um, I'm excited for the size of it. I'm a bit daunted by how much work it's going to be to get this working because it will be a challenge structurally to get it working. I think we will have to um, see what we can do to accommodate uh, like some support rods or maybe there's a better way of uh, putting bits and pieces together. It wasn't quite as just keep adding on to it as I was hoping. Um, the angles that we could get to do that just didn't look stylistically as cool. So what I'm going for is just like, same manufacturer, bigger brother, right? Hence the Ursula, which is like little she-bear, and the Ursa, which is she-bear. Um, why a female bear? Well, just because it kind of follows the ship-based uh, nomenclature, and um, yeah. I think uh, they're fitting names for the class of ship. We are trying to kind of create a little bit of lore and that sort of thing that we might use in the future. Um, so uh, let's get the top decks off again and let's talk about planning the crawl spaces here. So I figured we might be better off actually going for the parts that Alvin made, uh, partially because they should already be on the grid. Uh, and this is just a reference version of um, the crawl space models that we actually... This is way more variants than I remember us putting out. Um, so we, we already have an impressive amount. I was considering changing the style somewhat. Um, but I don't know. I think maybe I'm overthinking things. Um, obviously we're going to have some uh, custom objects and th as always Usually, if you own absolutely everything we've ever made, there will be certain models that will be repeats in larger ships. Um, but usually, and especially now, we're trying to keep the Kickstarter pricing at a point where you're going to be paying a lot more if you miss out on the Kickstarter. Um, hence why we're setting the price of the shuttle at 20 euro. Um, then we'll probably sell it at, you know, 35 bucks instead on the actual store or something like that. Um, I, I don't know yet. Uh, so that's, I'm just trying to explain where our thinking is coming from. So we need um, both the crawl spaces but also the way to get into the crawl spaces. Um, and I think honestly the only thing we've got at the moment are these. So this is from the forward section of Odyssey actually. Oh, that's right, these were from Odyssey, not from uh, Starship The Next Generation. Also a great deal. Um, and I know there are ladder wells and that that will probably recycle as well. So the big thing when planning this is when you've got an odd object, how are you going to fill it up? But this still goes so much faster than trying to work the other direction, say when you have a traveler deck plan that you're trying to stick to, but it doesn't make sense in 3D. Um, so, I'm just looking at what we need here. So, for example, I had laid out this corner, and uh, let's find a corner to replace it. Let's keep it nice and simple. So, we have square corners, and we have uh, sort of like curved ones. I think we'll go for a squarish one. All I'm going to do is, oh, let's center the pivot on that. That should still be on the grid, I think. So if I move that up, yeah, it's completely aligned. We're all good. So I'm not going to take this model. What I'm going to do is duplicate, because actually in Maya we have this thing called a reference editor. And you can see here, I have reference crawl space, rn reference crawl spaces dot mb. And this is actually a separate scene. This is it here. And when I update this scene and save it, it will update uh, the other copy in the Nostromo concept uh, file that I've opened. And um, the benefit of references is they're not actually in your scene, so they don't affect the size of your file. Like this file is, I think, up at 700 meg or something at this point. So this is not adding additional stuff. And for example, we could just turn off 
the reference APC here and it will take that out of the scene it doesn't cost any memory or anything and then we can put it back in when we want it um, so just as an example so if I copy this oh now I don't know which one is the copy that's 5039 that's 5028 so it must be that one that's a copy um, so let's move that and put that back where it was and we'll just move this into place and to facilitate this I'm also going to whoops uh, where did we go go to a grid I'm going to drop the grid down to just two units so to explain this grid uh, we have the length and width set to 3000 units that really just affects how big the grid is um, each unit in this scene is one millimeter uh, so we have set up grid lines every 25.4 units, which means every inch. And then uh, we have subdivided that into two. So you can see here that when we move this, it's very jumpy and jerky because it only has uh, half inch increments that it can move. So let's move this into place up there and you can see that should fit in perfectly um, so what we want to do is just keep building out like this and at the same time we're checking if it intersects with the hole and we can see here that it actually does this creates an issue and this is also part of the reason why um, part of the reason why um, it's important to do this at this phase right so here if we had this corner there we have a bit of an issue where we've got some intersection going on. Now, if we had just taken this block, which is, is just the interior section, not the exterior, so let's move this over for a second, we don't have any issues with this poking out. And if we look at this really carefully, and I think the best way to do this is if we turn on our wireframe, like so, um, we can see where the problem areas are going to be or not. So, a solution here is just to print this part um, integrated into the hole. Now there is a issue with that, actually two issues. Um, we don't know yet where this part will be, but I do know that if we're looking at similar parts, like so, actually let's take the bottom one. This is a chunk of the Erebus that is essentially the same sort of area that we'll be working on. It moves into the engine section, right? Um, we cannot print this part standing like this on the printer. We have to print it standing like this on the printer. Um, but we have an issue here where if we use this corner and uh, we did a similar thing where you kind of take the front part there and it prints like this, we have this massive overhanging area. So really we kind of want to create that separate. So there is something to be said for making this um, in a different direction. Now sometimes what you can do is just add little bits and bobs to the hull to get uh, pieces to stick out a bit more. Usually when you see that on my designs it's to accommodate the interior tiles. Um, so if we integrated that it's going to be an issue we could have some kind of separate insert but it is a, a bit of a pain so what can we do well the level above we have flooring not great so we have some considerations we could make the first one is that instead of having this passage continue here as it does um, what we actually do is change how you enter these sections. So there are a couple of issues with this. One, if we actually move this back just to here, we're getting awfully close, but we've still got intersection. So the furthest back this could be and still work is here, I think. So. If I isolate this and the engine 
No, still intersection here. So even further back here, which is not great because it means we can't have this passage here unless we make a special piece. Now, I think it might be worth doing that. And the reason is because otherwise, if we want to have these continuous passages, we actually need to have um, we actually need to have uh, we, we, we would need to move this wall back and we're greatly changing the size of our cargo bay and whilst that's possible whilst we could do a sort of like a pixely type like we could take this wall out and say move this here instead and then uh, you could kind of do something like this but it feels awkward and it feels forced and it still won't fix everything so really the best option is to move this back into place and just assume that we need a custom piece here so I'm just gonna, gonna cut off the floor for now the parts that intersect and we're gonna handle this in the future we're gonna have to have a think about it but at least now by exploring this, I know there is a potential issue that I need to keep in consideration. So we'll come back to that in the future, not on a stream. I mean, I need to figure that out, but uh, let's close that poll. 88% said yes, so we're definitely leaving that window in. Um, and we had 17 votes, which is a really good turnout considering we only have uh, 21 people here at the moment. Um, so yeah. These create a number of issues and this is one of the reasons why these designs become such nightmares because you need to think of print orientation. You can't just print uh, in a vacuum, uh, at least not with an FDM printer. So we need to think about orientation, we need to think about aesthetically how good it looks. Here we don't have the room unless we moved where the engines were and that would require a hell of a lot more work. Uh, so in this case, having a special part that just slots in after the fact is probably actually the best solution. It's not an elegant solution, um, but uh, what we could probably do is take like this section, make it a full and proper um, tile, and then uh, make it in such a way so that um, this floor is just customized to fit this issue. So. Um, it's an issue for further down the line um, and then we sort of reach this wall here and we've got a similar circumstance where we kind of probably need to shift where this sort of reaches right at some point here it would be good to have an iris hmm, I don't know I think we I'm looking at having an iris there um, one here seems like it's unnecessary because we could join this up to there, right? Um, the idea is just we need this network. How is the alien or whatever is infested the ship making its way from one area to the other? Um, yeah, sometimes it is inevitable uh, with that. Actually, yeah, that's a good point. Does the beveled corner look better? Uh, so we can grab one of those and have a look. But I don't think it's going to solve our issue. But by all means, let's try. Um, I think there'll still be some intersection here, so we'll see. Maybe I am wrong, and I would love to be wrong. And in which case, I will sing your praises. Um, so let's stick that in there. Stick that there. We'll move this out for the time being. And move that into position. So let's see. Ah, uh, shame. Intersection. Oh well, uh, so I'm just going to delete that because it's a copy, leave this in for now, and um, yeah. So let's find the next piece. I can turn off my wireframing too. So I spoke about wanting to have like this sort of like channel with ladders and things in it. Um, sorry, we've got an auto save going on at the moment, so we just got to wait a sec. And then actually I need to round things up in a second, so let's just find one piece to attach to this. Right, so we have a variety of different options here. 
what I'm going to try and look for is something that might just alter the path a little bit. And we have these here, actually. This might be a good sort of move. So this thing, let's duplicate that, move it into place, because uh, we actually need to shift the channel a little bit here. So let's get that up into place. It looks like it's the right height. And then we move it back to, say, here. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, because we've got the... Uh, we actually, our grid is too small. We need to change this to four. So I usually work without changing the grid from but uh, a factor of two. Uh, I usually work uh, kind of like, you know, bits. <laughs> so uh, two, four, eight, uh, 16, 32, 64. Usually that's, that's what I work in and that makes that of an inch, right? So here we're probably sticking out a bit. Yep. Um, so we, however, we only need this to be like here, maybe. So is that intersecting just a tiny bit, maybe? So that's something we need to keep in mind. Um, or we keep the deeper version here and have it actually popping out. So if we had just, uh, say, this piece and duplicate it over, and this is just the gutted out interior. Uh, that could come out here, right? And then you could continue on further out in the ship. As opposed to sort of like having it over here and intersecting. So either we've got to make yet another specialty piece, which is, you know, possible, but probably something we'd like to avoid. Um, or we need to make some more considerations and adjustments. So. It's all about fitting this in and whether or not this in itself is enough or if we need to come out even further. Um, like for example, duplicating this to something like that, but you can see it in a sec. So what seems to be perfectly reasonable uh, to plan out becomes a bit of an issue when you have these weird forms to work with. So I kind of am getting a bit of flashback to the time uh, when I was working on um, on the Type S. So this is going to be a challenge. It's going to be an ongoing challenge. I'm probably going to work on this some over the weekend while the wife is away. Uh, but it is going to be a big job. Um, next week, should have something more interesting to show, hopefully a fuller concept. We'll also have uh, some other work we're working on because the painting should be finished. Um, but for a pop-up show, I really appreciate the 20 of you that decided to come and visit. Uh, hopefully uh, you guys are excited about Soul Survivor. You can find the link uh, to join up the campaign in the description of this video. Uh, please like and subscribe if you think this is something uh, that is worth your while or that you'd like to show support for and uh, yeah we'll be back next week with yet another stream and thank you for joining me bye guys